Hello everyone, this is Brad Tallis with NextGen Solutions, and welcome to the second episode of Banter with Brad. In this series, I answer questions and topics sent to me from you, the viewers. I'll show different ways to approach the problem and share some tips and methods that will hopefully help you on your future projects. If you want your question or topic to appear on a future Banter with Brad episode, please email them to me at bradtallis at nextgensolutions.com. This week's question comes from Raymond H. He asks, how can I get a pattern to wrap around a curve? So this question came from the Fusion Users Group on Facebook, and I wanted to give a personal shout out to Martin Marriott for providing the solution that I'll be showing all of you. Let's take a look at the problem and then take a look at the solution. So the question was how to create like this diamond profile to follow along this face all the way around and curve around this curved edge. So I used a pattern on a path to do this, but you'll notice as we zoom in, sure enough, it, it patterned the body around, but they're kind of just touching the surface here. And we want it to kind of wrap around this surface. And you really can't do that with pattern on a path. So the solution that Martin recommended was using the sheet metal functionality. And you might be going, wait, what? But this is actually a really cool trick. I use this quite a bit. Um, I've used it for simulating like flex circuits for electronics. If I want to create a complex shape that follows you know, a complex profile, I can use the sheet metal to unfold, create the pattern that I want, and then fold it back. And so that's what I'm going to show you here. So I'm going to go ahead and um, let's just get rid of all of these uh, bodies here, except for the first one. Um, so I basically have this box and then I have uh, this diamond. Um, and in fact, I'll go ahead and show you how I created the diamond um, real quick. So let's um, turn on my sketch. So I'll just say extrude. So I just created um, a rectangle. I'm just gonna go ahead and start to extrude some random distance, but then you'll notice we have this taper angle. And you, you can actually see like, here's how you set the distance. And then this allows you to change the taper angle. So you can kind of see as I rotate that, I'm gonna start rotating and keep going until I get to like, so there's 45 degrees. Maybe I want it to be a little bit more shallow, so I'm gonna to go to 60 degrees, and it's actually tapering that for me automatically. So that's how I created this little diamond shape. Now I don't wanna join it. I wanna make this a new body, and I'll say okay. Okay, so what we wanna do is um, create a sheet metal part that includes these faces. So I'm going to jump into my sheet metal module. Let's create a new component, a new sheet metal component. And I'm just going to leave everything default. I really don't care what the thickness is or anything like that. So I'm just going to go ahead and say, OK. I will create a sketch on the top. And let's go ahead and project. I don't want to project the whole thing. I only want to project a couple faces. So I'm going to. Um, click on this line here, this arc, and that line there, and I'll say OK. And we've just projected, though you can see those purple lines. Then I'm going to go into my um, flange command. So I'll say flange. It's asking for the edges or the profile, so I'll go ahead and just select this line. And I'll start to drag down. Okay. Now we see a couple things. It's actually on the wrong side. So I want it to be on the inside. So I can change that using this orientation from side one to side two. And now you can kind of see how it's on the inside of the box. And then I know my overall length um, is half an inch. So I'm gonna type in minus 0.5 in this case. And I'll just say, okay. 
So we use the information from the box to create this sheet metal extrusion or flange. Then I can come in and say unfold. So we're going to unfold all the bends. What's the stationary face? I'm going to click this flat face here, and you can see that it's unfolding that sheet metal to be totally flat. Perfect. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to um, pattern along a path, which is going to be a straight line. So I'm going to go back into the solid, and I'll say pattern. What do I want to pattern? Let's pattern this diamond body. What's the axis? I'll just click on um, one of these straight lines here, and then that allows us to drag in that direction. You can kind of see what that looks like. Instead of extent, I'm going to do spacing. And let's space it every uh, half inch. And we can see because these are half inch square, that makes sense. And then I can increase the quantity. So um, I can either type in a number, click this little up arrow, or I can actually grab this little slider and drag toward the plus direction. So I'll just do, so that's 16. Let's do maybe, um, let's just do 18 in this example and say, okay. Now, one of the tips I do recommend is um, if I try and join all of these to the sheet metal part, I sometimes get an error saying that the sheet metal part doesn't exist anymore. So I typically only, um, join the ones that are actually going to physically get bent. And what I mean by that is I'm going to come in here and say combine. My target body is going to be the sheet metal body. In fact, if I expand this open, you can see it's right here. So I'll go ahead and select it from the browser. And then what are the tools? So I don't need to, to do all of these over here. So I might just do these last few. The ones that are you know, going around the bend, which we can see right there, and then the ones that are laying flat in that direction. So I'm just gonna grab those. And I did grab one going this direction. And you'll see why here in just a second. So I'm gonna go ahead and join all of those together or combine them. Then if I go back into my sheet metal, we'll say refold faces and notice the result that we get. And if I zoom up on this, it's actually, you know, bending the, the shape around that curve. Now, the reason I selected this one is it, it might overlap just a small amount. Who knows? Um, so I wanted to make sure I captured that one. And I captured all of these because they went around the bend. And then I captured all of these because they were in a different orientation than these over here. So now I can come back, go into my solid and say, let's combine, you know, the target will be, oops, not, not that guy. It'll be that guy. And then the tool will be the rest of these diamonds. And we'll say, okay. And that's all one body. Now, if I want to, I can, um, come up here and combine all of that to my box. So I'll say, Combine those together, join them together, and we can see how it's all one body now, right here. So in this example, you know, maybe I wanted to 3D print this and I wanted these diamonds to go around that particular curve. So using the sheet metal is a great way of doing this. In fact, um, let me show you another quick example here. Um, I'll do another quick sheet metal component, create a sketch, and I'm going to do a top view. Now the trick with this is you do want to have a, at least a little bit of a straight line. You, you have to have a straight segment. But now I'm going to create like a, a spline curve, something like so, let's just say. And I want this to be nice and tangent, so I will use this curvature constraint. So I'll click on that line, click on that line, and you can see how it creates a nice curvature constraint there. 
and we'll finish the sketch. We'll do the exact same thing. We'll use the flange command. Um, let's just go, you know, minus 0.5 just to be similar. Um, then I can create a sketch on that face. So uh, in sheet metal, I can come in here and say unfold. What's my stationary face? I'll click on that flat face. And you can see how it lays out that spline. It lays it out flat. I'll say OK. We'll pattern this again, the exact same methods. So here's the body. Here's the axis. We'll drag and um, do the spacing. So we'll say minus 0.5 and increase the number, let's just say um, 15 in this case. Okay, so we'll do 18. So I'll say okay. Um, once again, I will come in here and um, use the combine command. The target body is gonna be the uh, sheet metal part. And then we'll join, so I'm going to leave these two, but I am going to grab the rest of these, like so. Say OK. And let's uh, refold the faces and notice the result that we get, where it's actually bending along that curve. So you can create some pretty cool shapes using the sheet metal functionality. So, hopefully you all learned something new with that tip. If you want your question or topic on the next Banter with Brad, please email them to me at bradtallis at nextgensolutions.com. And I look forward to seeing you on the next Banter with Brad. Thank you.